Change our hearts Actions are judged by their intention And every man shall be judged accordingly And whatever you keep inside In alhamdulillah wa nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئة أعمالنا ومن يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ثم أما بعد My dear brothers and sisters, wherever you are around the globe at this present time, I greet you with the greetings of the believers. Assalam. Peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you and the mercy and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I first and foremost ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless this time that we'll be spending together and to accept it as an hour that is solely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow it to be an hour in which we can grow together an hour in which we can recharge our hearts from the trials and tribulations that have afflicted us from throughout the week. My brothers and sisters, how is your ghayrah for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How is your zeal or jealousy for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If a crime against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is committed in front of your eyes. How does this make you feel inside you? Does your heart twist and turn like that of a tight rope? Because if it does, then this is ghayra for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in an authentic hadith, Inna Allah yaghar wal mu'min yaghar وَغَيْرَةَ اللَّهِ أَنْ يَأْتِي الْمُؤْمِنُ مَا هُرِّمَ عَلَيْهِ The Prophet said that verily Allah becomes jealous and the believer becomes jealous and the jealousy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is invoked when the believer approaches that in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited. Brothers and sisters, in this hadith, the Prophet wasallam is affirming, affirming the attribute of ghayra, the attribute of zeal or jealousy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the jealousy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something we cannot reject, nor can we interpret it. But it is not like that of the creation. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in the Qur'an, وَلَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ And there is nothing else like him. But, Allah, but the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is affirming this attribute with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the jealousy or zeal of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is invoked when the slave, when the slave exceeds that in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited for him. And the greatest of that is the, the sin of shirk. Shirk associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So jealousy, my brothers and sisters, is an attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is an attribute of the believer. And it is an attribute of the prophets. One day the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was teaching the companions on the ruling on what to do if you find someone who is committing adultery. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِذَا دَخَلَ أَحَدَكُمْ عَلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ فَوَجِدَ مَا يُرِيبُ فَلْيَشْحَدَ أَرْبَعَ 
the Prophet ﷺ said that if any of you was to enter upon his family and to find his wife in a compromising position, meaning with another man, then he is to bring four witnesses. Upon this, the Sahaba, Sa'd bin Mu'adh, opened his eyes and stood up out of zeal and said, O oh, Rasulullah, if I enter upon my house and I find my wife in a compromising position with another man, that I should wait for four witnesses? No, Wallahi, by the one who has sent you, I will not do that. That if I enter into my house and I find my wife in a compromising position with another man, then I will disconnect the head from the shoulders and I will swing the sword without any mercy. And then I will wait and see for whatever Allah wants to do with me. The Prophet wasallam said to the companions, أَتْعَجِبُونَ أَنْ غَيْرَتِي سَعَدْ The Prophet wasallam said, does it astonish you the, the ghayra, the zeal or jealousy of Sa'd? For verily I am more jealous and have more zeal than Sa'd. And Allah is more jealous than I. And it is because of the jealousy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has prohibited the illicit relationships, whether they be in open or secret. My dear brothers and sisters, the Prophet ﷺ is teaching us a lesson here. Usually when we look at the word jealousy or zeal or ghayrah, that it often is a negative, it's, it's often looked at as a negative aspect. But the Prophet ﷺ is teaching us here that zeal or jealousy is of two types. There is the zeal or jealousy that is loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and is the zeal or jealousy of the believer. But there is the zeal or jealousy that invokes the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in an authentic hadith that of jealousy, there is the jealousy that invokes the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the jealousy of a husband towards his believing wife in which there is no doubt about her. In which there is no doubt about her. That if a husband is to behave in a jealous manner and to, to accuse a believing woman, a chaste woman who is protecting herself for her husband, then this invokes the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And without doubt, the jealousy of the brothers of Yusuf alayhi salam, who threw him in the well out of their jealousy, it is without doubt that this is a jealousy that invokes the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there is jealousy that is loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of this jealousy or zeal, ghayra, is the jealousy of a man for his family. A jealousy for his wife. Not against, but for his wife and for his family. In fact, the Prophet wasallam taught us that this form of zeal or jealousy is a form of jihad. A form of struggling in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet wasallam said, Man, man qut, qutila duna, duna ahlihi fahuwa shaheed. That whoever is killed defending the honor of his family, of his wife, then he is a martyr. And brothers and sisters, this is something that we have to do as a believer to, to defend. This is something that is loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to defend the honor of our wives, the honor of our daughters, the honor of our families, defending them, defending them from those who wish to, to have with them their way. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam one day, my brothers and sisters, had a walima, a wedding party. And it was his wedding for Zainab, with, with Zainab bin Jash, radiallahu anha. And this was before the verses of the hijab had been revealed. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam that day 
had over 300 people coming in and out. Almost many of the people of, of Medina. And Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that you should do something, Ya Rasulullah. Today every evil person and every good person is coming in and they're seeing your wives and, and staring at your wives, some of them. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't do anything because he had not received any revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then it continued. The wedding party continued and Zainab from her shyness for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stood with her face against the wall so that the people could not stare at her and stood out of shyness. And this is the characteristic of the good Muslimah. And then eventually all of the people left the house of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it was back to normal. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed for us a very important verse. وَإِذَا سَأَلْتُمُهُنَّ That if you are to ask them, فَإِذَا سَأَلْتُمُهُنَّ مَتَاعًا That if you are to ask them for something, anything, then ask them from behind the curtain or the petition. And the Prophet ﷺ immediately, from his zeal, from his zeal that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him, he, he came out of the house and recited this verse to the people and then searched for a partition, searched for a curtain until he found a curtain and brought it home and immediately placed it in his house to defend the honor of his wives. Immediately placed a partition. And this is the house of the believers, my brothers and sisters. This is the house of the, of the true believer that he has partitioned off so that the, his, the honor of his wives is protected. We must protect the honor of our wives and of our daughters. For they are not for everybody to look at and to think lustful thoughts about. We must protect their honor. And the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us in this hadith, that the Prophet sallallahu said that there is three people who will never enter paradise. Three types of people that will never enter paradise. And one of those is called a dayuth. The Sahaba didn't even know what a dayuth was. So they asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, what is a dayuth? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that he is the one in, he, in whom he doesn't care who comes in and speaks and sits with his wife. Subhanallah. He will never enter paradise. The one who is open, he has no ghira. He has no ghira or jealousy or he does not defend the honor of his wife. He allows any, any, any person from the street to come and sit, drink coffee, talk to his wife. For this, my brothers and sisters, is something that we have to learn. Something we have to learn is this ghira for our families. To prevent our daughters from going on the street without the correct hijab. To prevent our wives to, to advise them. Advise them in the best manner. And of zeal or jealousy for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my brothers and sisters, is the zeal or jealousy that a believer has for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What I mean by that is that when the believer sees those who are constantly committing sins, constantly spreading evil and fasad and through the earth, that that believer has it in his heart that he wants to change this, that he, he, he dislikes this, he cannot be happy with it. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in an authentic hadith, مَنْ رَأَ مِنْكُمْ مُنْكُرًا فَلْيُغَيْرُهُ بِيَّدِي فَإِنْ لَمْ تَسْتَطِعْ فَبِلِسَانِي فَإِنْ لَمْ تَسْتَطِعْ فَبِقَلْبِي وَذَلِكَ أَضْعَفَ الْإِمَانِ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that whoever of you sees an evil, that he should change it with his hand. But if he is unable to, 
then he should change it with his speech. And if he is unable to do that, then he should hate it in his heart. And that is the weakest of Iman. Changing the munkr with the hand. If you're in the position, if you're in a government, if you're in a police force, if you're the principal of a school, if you're the, 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 the manager of a business, if you're, if you're the head hold of a household, then it is upon you to change the munkar, to change the evil with your hand. But if you are not in that position, then you are to try and change it with your speech, to speak out about the evil that is, that is being spread, about the corruption, to speak out about it, to not remain silent. But if you are unable to do that, even if it is out of fear for your life, then you are to hate it in your heart. To hate the corruption, to hate the, the zina, to hate the, the films that are promoting the evil. That you are to hate this in your heart and to dislike it and to disconnect yourself from it. Have nothing to do with it. One day the Prophet wasallam came home and walked into his house and he saw Aisha had placed a, a cloth that had a picture of a statue on it and she had placed it as a decoration of the wall. The Prophet wasallam, his face changed with anger and he quickly, immediately ripped it off and ripped it down. And he said that the, the, those who are the the people who are drawing and copying the creation of Allah, that they are the people of hellfire, or kama qala rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And of the jealousy or zeal that is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is for the zeal or jealousy that we have for our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Sahaba are the best example of how they had jealousy and zeal for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Zubair, the great Sahaba Zubair, Radiallahu anhu one day in the battle of Uhud when the disbelievers had come and the archers had come off the mountain the disbelievers came round the mountain and began to attack the Muslims from behind and from the front until it was very grim it was looking like the Muslims were defeated even the word had began to spread that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had died and people began to say that the Prophet had died some left some were disheartened. But Zubair radiallahu anhu, Zubair grabbed his sword and ran and mounted a horse. And he began to gallop and gallop and gallop as fast as he could until in the direction of, of the disbelievers. Until he saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he stopped. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Where are you going, Zubair? He said, Ya Rasulullah, they had said that you, that you had been killed. So the Prophet ﷺ said, and where were you going? He said, I was going in the direction of the disbelievers. The Prophet ﷺ said, and what were you going to do, Ya Zubair? He said, I was going to go there and to slay them until I was killed with you, Ya Rasul. Until I was killed with you, Ya Rasulullah. This is the zeal that the believers had, that the Sahaba had for the Prophet ﷺ, defending the honor. Defending the honor and how much do we need it today when people are attacking the honor of our, of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam night and day. That we must, we must have this zeal and defend our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the best manner, in the manner that is going to produce good results from it. Inshallah Ta'ala, my brothers and sisters, we'll take a short break and we'll return just after this short break. ما ظهر منها وما بطن والإثم والبغي بغير الحق 
Islam is a comprehensive way of life. It deals with everything. The Prophet ﷺ wanted to empower people and he wanted them to feel the responsibility, not just to rely on the state, the companions radiallahu ta'ala anhum, and in particular Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali. In the beginning, they were not pleased and they were not proud to become the Khalifa. These days, we see the candidates running to become the Amis. Islamic State has to provide all inhabitants with the basic needs. It has to fulfill their basic needs. One of the main foundations of the Islamic State is to establish justice. دينك وكتابك وسنة نبيك وعبادك الموحدين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته my dear brothers and sisters and welcome back to Living Hearts the program that inshallah ta'ala we pray really we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows it to be an hour in which we can grow together in our Islam and to recharge our hearts from the trials and tribulation, tribulations that have afflicted us from throughout the week my brothers and sisters Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in the Quran wal mu'minuna wal mu'minat ba'duhum awliya'u ba'd يأمرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر ويقيمون الصلاة ويأتون الزكاة ويطيعون الله ورسوله أولئك يرحمهم الله إن الله كان عليكم إن الله عزيز حكيم الله سبحانه وتعالى has said in the Quran the believing men and the believing women are allies of each other allies confederates they call to the good and they forbid the evil and they establish the prayer and pay the zakat the charity and they obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his prophet those are the ones that Allah will have mercy on and verily Allah is the almighty and the all-wise Brothers and sisters, part of, of the, the zeal or the jealousy that is loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the jealousy or zeal that we have for our fellow Muslim brothers and sisters around the world. We see here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Wal mu'minuna wal mu'minat ba'duhum awliya'u ba'd. That the believing men, believing men and believing women they are, are allies of each other, confederates. That means, my brothers and sisters, that if a person, if a, if, if a sister or a brother is in a hardship and another on the other side of the world, then we in our hearts, we feel this and we feel for them. And if we are able to do anything to help them, then we must do this. And today, my brothers and sisters, we see what has recurred in history in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the, the evildoers have always tried to attack our beloved sisters in Islam try to dishonor them try to take away their honor that, that Allah has given them and in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the Bani Qanaqa there was a, a tribe called Bani Qanaqa. And they were a Jewish tribe who was known 
to be a rich tribe who made weapons. And they lived in an area in Medina and the, the believers had a peace treaty with them. But the peace treaty was very shaky because they had tried to break it a few times. And this time, a believing sister went to one of their gold shops and wished to purchase some gold. She entered in and began to look at the gold and the, the two Jewish men that were inside began to uh, flirt with her and began to say dirty things to her. But she, she refused and, said, and they wanted to say, show, show me your face, show me your aura, show me what you have. But she refused and said no. And she continued to look for what she was going to buy. And one of them snuck behind her and tied a rope to her hijab and then tied it to another area of the shop. And she did not know. And she stood up to leave. When she stood up to leave, her hijab was pulled off and her aura was exposed. And she screamed at the top of her voice. Upon hearing this, a believing brother was walking by and he heard the scream. He immediately entered into the shop and he saw the evildoers, what they were doing to the sister. So he took his sword and he put an end to it. But he was in the middle of the, of the tribe of Bani Qanaka, the area of the Bani Qanaka. So the, the tribe then gathered and beat him and killed him. And he was martyred for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The news came back to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam immediately and the reaction from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was to send an army that would finish this problem once and for all. An army that had the greatest of companions amongst it. And they came back and came and dealt with Bani Qanaqa so that there was never any incident like this ever again. Brothers and sisters, it has been the the position of the enemy of Islam to attack our brothers and sisters, to attack our sisters, especially our sisters, to try to dishonor them, whether it is in France or Australia or America or anywhere, that there are those who are the enemies of Islam who try to, try to take away the honor of our sisters. And today is no, no exception. This is happening everywhere. And one of the weapons, one of the weapons that they are using today as a weapon against Islam is rape. Raping our sisters. Whether it has, we have seen the Abu Ghraib, we have seen in Iraq, we have seen in Afghanistan that our sisters have been raped, our daughters have been raped. And now it is happening in Syria. In Syria, my brothers and sisters, take a look at this. الشبيحة المتواجدة في الشارع حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل الله أكبر الله أكبر لأنه شبيحة سبحان الله حسبي الله ونعم الوكيل Hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakil. Our brother, our sisters, sisters that are obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are being raped, are being taken from the street, taken from their houses. Our daughters, taken from their houses and are being raped 
And what are we doing but sleeping? Brothers and sisters, imagine if this was your daughter. Imagine if this was your sister. Well, it is. It is your sister, your sister in Islam. They actually caught one of these shabihas, they call them, the thugs, that is working for the Assad government. And they caught him. And he said that he was told by the, the head of the police there to, to target women that wore hijab, to target women that wore the abaya, and to take them and to rape them. And the reports that have come, the reports have come that now, that, that uh, this, is, this is six months ago, that there had been over 4,000 case, reported cases, reported cases of rapes from the, from the Bashar Assad government. And what are we doing but sleeping? Where is our ghira? Where is our ghira for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Where is our jealousy and our zeal for these sisters that are, that, that are, are being taken off the streets? What are we doing? Even our holy sites, even our holy masajid, our, our mosques, are being destroyed, are being under occupation. Our masajid, our mosques, under occupation. And we are sleeping. We are asleep. It is as if we have taken a sleeping pill and we cannot wake up. Where is the ghira? Where is the ghira for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Our brothers and sisters are suffering. And we are doing what? Having conferences, talking about peace. Peace. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters. Wallahi. Allah will account us for this. Allah will take account for us. For this. That we are sleeping like this. Instead of having ghira, instead of having jealousy for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or zeal for our brothers and sisters, especially our sisters, instead of this, we are having zeal for football matches. Zeal for ahli, or whatever the name of the football matches. Zeal for, for people playing, kicking a ball. Kicking a ball into a net. You can see, look. Muslims killing each other, killing each other for the sake of a ball. Bits al Qura. Wallahi, bits al Qura. What an evil ball that is. But it is not the fault of the ball, it is the fault of ourselves. When are we going to wake up? When are we going to, to bring this ghira out that we are supposed to have? For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When are you going to wait? Are you going to wait until it is your daughter that is raped? Wallahi, my brothers and sisters. We have to burn in our hearts. We have to make a revolution in ourselves. To bring this ghira out for the sake of Allah. Stop thinking about yourself. Stop thinking about your own, your own self and your own, your own needs. Your own money and your own lovely couch that you have and start thinking about your brothers and sisters around the world. Brothers and sisters, inshallah ta'ala, now we will open up the telephone lines and inshallah we would love to hear from you if you have anything, if you have anything to say. Uh, this week the numbers have changed a little bit so take a look at the screen and write the numbers down and I ask the brothers in the office there to keep the, keep the numbers up because they have changed. Keep them up there. And my brothers and sisters, if you have anything that you want to add, anything you want to ask, anything that you think can help us to, to wake up this ghira, to wake up this jealousy or zeal for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then please, please call in and tell us. Maybe you even have a question. Maybe you didn't understand what jealousy or zeal for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meant. And this is something that I found, my brothers and sisters, and please feel free to call in. Actually, we want you to call in. This is your time, my brothers and sisters. Uh, this week on the Facebook, we asked the question, and this was very interesting. We asked the question, what things can we do to have zeal or jealousy for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Now, I noticed from the, from the answers, and I noticed from 
uh, the lack of answers that many people didn't understand. And this was an aspect of our deen that we didn't understand. And alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, this is good, my brothers and sisters. This is a good thing that this came to us, that we realized that we didn't know what this ghira thing is. We thought that jealousy was a, was a bad thing. Yes, there are forms of jealousy that invokes the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are forms of jealousy that we need to eradicate from our hearts. But there are forms of jealousy that is loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we mentioned earlier, forms of jealousy that is part of the makeup of the believer. And brothers and sisters, some of the answers that we had on the Facebook, unfortunately we're not able to bring them up. Uh, but we had, uh, some, uh, we had some answers. One brother, mashallah, he had a very good answer. And that was that you should be jealous when you think about the things that you can do, acts of worship and good deeds, and then you see that, some, that you didn't do them, and then somebody else did them. Subhanallah. What a great answer. That you yourself, you thought of it, but you didn't do it. But the other person, he did it. And this is what we need. We need to put things into action. And we should be jealous of that. We should be jealous in a good manner, in a good way. To, that we should feel in ourselves, I let that, I let that opportunity slip. We had another uh, sister, I think Iman Gonzalez. Uh, I think she said that we can prevent our families from watching haram. Stopping the munka, stopping the evil in our own homes. Subhanallah, how many of us are needing to do this? To stop the evil in our own homes. If we take a look around in our homes, how much evil could we find if we really searched? Television, music, radios, all these things. Even the Sahaba used to leave things that would that would keep them occupied rather than the deen. Keep them occupied. So if we take a look around, we had some answers from some sisters, mashallah. Barakallah fikum, ya sisters. This is something that I, I found was very good. That they were talking about the negative aspect of jealousy and that was uh, that we should not have this in our hearts and we should get rid of that. That is true. But at the same time, the zeal or jealousy, the ghira that we have for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, we should have this aspect. And once again, brothers and sisters, I will uh, invite you to please call in. Uh, please uh, have your say. If there is something that you can say to us that will help us, something that you can say will advise us, that can wake us up from this, uh, some question that you have, maybe question with the hijab or question anything related to today's topic, then feel free to call in. In fact, call in. Don't hesitate. The numbers are there on the screen and we are waiting for your call. We are waiting for you to call in. This is your time, your time to have your say. And this is what this part of the segment is all about, about you having your say, about teaching each other. Because many of you have great ideas, I know that. And many of you have great questions. So feel free to call in. Even the Prophet Sulaiman, alayhi salam, the Prophet Sulaiman, one day, was he was loving he, he used to love horses Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Suleiman alayhi salam the greatest kingdom ever the greatest kingdom everything and this was a, a, a dua that Dawood alayhi salam made to, to give me the greatest kingdom that will never be seen again greater than this and Suleiman alayhi salam had this a uh, great kingdom, but just before we go on with that, we'll take this telephone call, inshallah. Brother Amr from Egypt. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi barakatuh, brother Amr. I want to ask about uh, the jealousy. 
About what, brother? Virginity. How can I improve it? About what, brother? Zira. Zira. How can I improve it? How can you improve it? Mashallah. Mashallah. Very good, brother. Very good. Do you have any other questions, brother? Yes. Any? Thanks a lot. Okay. How can I improve my ghira? First of all, you have to, whenever you're treating yourself from a sickness, and that's what it is. If you've lost your ghira, it is because you have the sickness, and more than likely, more than likely the sickness that you have is love of dunya, love of, of women. The best way to improve your ghira is to stop looking at that in which is haram. To stop looking at that in which is haram. Wallahi, the television today, if we take a look at the television sets, we find that there is 999 channels that are promoting every act of fornication, every act of filth, nakedness, bringing it, and we are bringing it into our homes. A good way for you to improve your ghira is to delete this rubbish from your screen. Delete it from your heart and delete it from your screen and focus only on these, on these things and you will watch that your, your ghira yourself will improve, my brother. Uh, we have another telephone call, inshallah we have. S sister Anud from KSA. Assalamu alaikum sister. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, I suggest that we have uh, to first, uh, first thing to pray for our, ourselves and uh, all, all of Muslims, especially uh, the area, areas that there is conflict and the wars like that. And second, uh, we have to uh, clean our hearts and uh, obey uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Uh, and we have to take care of our children, uh, to teach them, uh, to uh, uh, keep them uh, away from uh, bad things like uh, uh, bad movies, bad, uh, uh, um, some, something that they can see in internet or uh, um, bad channels. And uh, really we have to stop uh, bad things that we deal in our life and behave in our life. And I think, uh, inshallah, inshallah, hope, hopefully will come. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in Allah, la yubiyu adra man ahsana amala. Wa man ya'mal misqala dharratin khayra yara. Wa man ya'mal misqala dharratin sharra yara. As Allah, I, I ask God uh, to... Um, to uh, solve all our pro problems all over the world and uh, and we have to to, to stop uh, these bad things if, especially uh, bad uh, bad mo movies bad uh, uh, stop it jazaki allah khair sister we we have we have to make uh, uh, what we can complain i mean hamla Jazaki Allahu Khair, sister. Thank yes. you. Thank you very much. MashaAllah. You have given us some very good pointers. Uh, pray for ourselves and for our fellow Muslims. Uh, also, to clean our hearts. Clean our hearts from... Detach. We have to detach, my brothers and sisters. Uh, take care of our children. Allahu Akbar. Take care of our children. This is where the main problem is that we're brought up now in a world that has no ghira. We're brought up in a world that has no shyness. And the reason why we did the topic today, ghira, yani this uh, jealousy or zeal, is because it is the companion of shyness. It is the companion. Last week we did shyness. This week, ghira, because it is the companion. The house that is built on Islam is the house where, the, where the, it has shyness, and and ghira. We have another telephone call. Musa from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum, Musa. Assalamu alaikum, Musa. We seem to have lost Musa. 
call back Musa if you can. Uh, we have, the sister has mentioned, keep our kids away from movies, subhanAllah. Keep our children away from movies. How many times have you heard it here on Huda TV to, to, to leave these this movies, these movies? These movies are invented to destroy your shyness and to destroy your ghayrah. That nakedness becomes part of the household that you believe because you're watching this filth day in and day out that you start to believe that this is how life is. And it is for those who disbelieve. That is how life is. But for the believer, that is not how life is. The believer, like we mentioned before, that the believer, he has in his home a barrier, a curtain in which he protects the honor of his, of his daughters and of his wives. We have another telephone call here. Naeem from Zambia. Maryam, sorry. Maryam from Zambia. Alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, sister. Thank you, my brother, for your call. 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 What I believe is, the main problem in the Muslim society is that many of us are sleeping, watching all the television movies, really doesn't listen, to make our hearts die. And most of the Muslims have that has to be there because they are easy following the 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 dunya the very good and beautiful things that we see in the world than what we think that we have to see tomorrow in the heaven in general that Allah can be missing. If all the Muslims try hard to forget the most of their best time to Allah and Quran and listen to what Allah says all the time, I believe all the missing will have the most real, like the prophet and the Sahara. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Jazakhi Allahu Khair, sister. Jazakhi Allahu Khair. That was a very beautiful, uh, very beautiful comment, sister. Uh, we have time for one more phone call if there is, but uh, Wallahi. Okay, we do have one more phone call. Khadija from Urdan. MashaAllah. Hello? Hello, Salaam Alaikum, sister Khadija. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Very, I can't speak English, very good, but I will try. Go for it, sister. Okay. Very, uh, I'm, uh, I'm not a man, and I can't do anything for Syria. But way I, every day, pray, pray for a lot to protect our girls, our sisters in Syria. Yes. I, I, I can't do anything for Syria, just I, uh, I do sadaqa, sadaqa, I to sadaqa every day to this protect our, our people, our sisters and brothers in Syria. I understand, sister. Wallahi, I understand. And the fact is that you can do things and you are doing things. By making dua for your sisters is, is what you must do. It is what you must do. And may Allah reward you for this, sister. And sadaqah is also what you must do. But you also must realize that there is something that is stopping us all. There is something that is stopping this, this event from, stop, from, from being finished. It could have been finished a long, a long time ago. If we take a look at Mali, for example, today, we see that just a small group of, of believers are trying to rule with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the, West, the Western world has sent an army there to destroy them. But if we look at Syria, for two and a half years now, they have been getting killed and being raped, and yet nobody has moved. Nobody has moved. It is time for a change. It is time for a change. It is time for us to come forth and to make that change, my brothers and sisters. It is time for us as believers to come out of our shells and to make that change. Do whatever we can. And Barakallah Fiki, sister. Barakallah fiki, sister. sister. Brothers and sisters, we don't have too much time left, so we want to make dua for our brothers and sisters all around the world. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to return the ghira to our hearts, Ya Rabb. Ya Rabb, return the ghira to our hearts so that we are defending the honor of our brothers and sisters wherever they are. 
Oh Allah, do not make our efforts as little as they are. Do not make them go to waste, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, accept our prayers wherever they are around the world for our sisters, for our sisters that are, that are being raped, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, protect their honor, protect their minds, protect their, their state of mind, Ya Rabb. Help them to become better. Help them to get over this trouble so that they can live a normal life again. Ya Rabb, Ya Rabb. Bring, help our governments to wake up to themselves and to, 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 to bring this ghira back, to stop thinking about only their own countries, but to think as the Ummah in general. Ya Rabb Al-Alameen, Ya Rabb, Ya Rabb, please Ya Rabb, accept our prayers and make us of those who are jealous and have zeal for, the, for your sake, Ya Rabb, and help us to bring back your law in the world, to your law in our lands, Ya Rabb Al-Alameen. Ya Rabb, Ya Rabb, inshallah ta'ala, my brothers and sisters, unfortunately, that's all we have time for today. Uh, I hope you have benefited as I have benefited. Just the last thing, the weekly task this week is to stop the munkar in your own home, to stop the evil, take a look around your home. If you see something that is haram, get it out. Even if it's deleting the, 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 the haram channels, don't go watching the haram channels, delete them. Take them out of your heart and out of your TV and may Allah reward you. My brothers and sisters, we don't have any more time. Uh, that's all we have time for today. So inshallah ta'ala until next week. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Be mindful of what you say. Be sincere when you pray. Today could be your last day. Bear each other no malice. Greed and faith can coexist. In the same heart, heart Only you can change your heart We call upon you to do so So that we may submit to you Oh Lord, only you can change your heart